Uh, hello, everybody. My name is David Post, uh, Managing Director for Corporate Development and Strategy at Chainlink Labs. And today we're here to talk about a topic that's on top of everybody's mind when they're starting a company, how to get funding. So the fundraising landscape can be hard to navigate for first-time founders and Web3. Uh, everything moves a lot faster, but the good news is there's plenty of funding sources available to help Web3 funders get their projects off the ground. And that's going to be the focus of the video today. So the first step uh, is to figure out how much you need to raise and whether uh, you think that you're in the position to raise that money. So there's different types of funding uh, for different stages of companies. And basically in Web3, it's a little bit different because a company doesn't typically raise six or seven rounds of funding or four rounds of funding before launching. It's typically one or two rounds. Uh, but if you're starting out, you're probably in the pre-seed stage in the eyes of a traditional investor. Uh, traditional investors in Web2 don't usually do pre-seed companies, but investors in the Web3 space are a bit more adventurous, primarily because they have an assumption you're probably going to be liquid within a couple of years. So if you have a great idea that you, know, you think will change the space, um, I, I think that what you want to think about is just raising enough money to you know, keep the company funded for a year, two years, something like that, uh, depending on what the valuation is. Um, and I think that that's going to be that that's a good good way to think about giving yourself the runway required to grow. And there's a number of different areas where you can get uh, pre-seed funding if you don't think you're ready to go out for institutional money. So there's grants that are available through different layer ones and layer twos. Um, so uh, look for those on Twitter. Or look at blockchaingrants.org. There's decentralized crowdfunding platforms like uh, Juicebox or Gitcoin. Uh, really interesting for early stage ideas. Have the community help you fund it. And then there are incubators and accelerators and founders communities. So if you want advice, you want expertise, there's a lot of great accelerators in the space. They'll provide you with some ideas on a structured format about how to get your, develop your idea and ultimately get things off the ground. So um, after you've gone through the process of getting your idea in place and you think that you have maybe gone through an accelerator, maybe you've gotten some grants, or maybe you just feel like you're ready. The next stop step is to go out for an institutional round of funding. So um, when you when you're selecting an investor, just um, it's kind of like selecting a business partner. You want to select somebody who you want to work with long run, who speaks the same language as you, who you have a good personal connection with. Um, there's the option to pick uh, basically an investor based on just them want to give you money. So if you don't really care about the what what you're going to get out of the investor relationships it's it's okay to take money uh you're giving this person a portion of your company they have an incentive to help you learn, grow over time so i think it's good to not take the first money that someone offers you but to be really systematic and thoughtful about which investors you work with and i would just say that you know party rounds were very uh popular in our industry over the last year where 20 investors are in one round i don't recommend that I think in terms of cap table design, it's better to give a bigger share to fewer numbers of investors because then they'll really care about more about what you're doing and you'll get more attention. So I think that's uh, I think that's important. What do investors want to see? Um, obviously, they're giving you their money. They want to get a return on their money and they want to give people money who will generate that return. So they're looking at your product. They're looking at your team. They're looking at the market. They're basically looking at the intersection of factors pertaining to your team and factors pertaining to the idea. So you really want to understand that when you come into a meeting with investors, you have to be the expert. You have to know way more than they do. Um, if you don't know the answer to a question, it's fine to say, I don't know, that shows maturity. But generally speaking on the product, on the market, on your specific space, you've got to you know, really know, have an encyclopedic knowledge. You have to know way more than they do. Um, and if you do that, then that, of course, increases your credibility. So you'll get a lot of questions about product, about team, about market, and you just got to be really prepared. So we tried to give a, a very quick summary here today in this video on how to think about funding an early, early stage Web3 startup. To find the right investment, it really helps to be part of a community of Web3 founders where you can pull your knowledge and you know, get expertise from people who have gone through the same process. If you're looking for a community to join, uh, I encourage you to join Startup with Chainlink. You'll get access to a global network of founders and the information and guidance you need to successfully launch a blockchain project. We hope to hear from you and thanks and good luck getting funded and good luck building.